Four of the General Electric built DX class locomotives are equipped with electronic fuel injection, namely 5039, 5212, 5391 and 5454, with 5212 being the first one to receive the modification in November 2020. For the longest time, DXC5212 was the only EFI fitted DX that I still hadn't seen, but that finally changed on the morning of Friday, October 20th, 2023. On this occasion, she was in charge of the famous Transalpine passenger train with classmates 5229, and I caught the pair at Whiteley Avenue and Addington Railway Station. And yes, I realised that I was unintentionally giving Jono and Ben some free publicity. Incidentally, I used to watch their telly programme when it was still a thing. Anyway, upon arrival at the station, I found that the former DX5235 was in charge of the Coastal Pacific train to Picton, which ended up leaving three minutes early. Meanwhile, DSC 2718 was shunting wagons in a nearby repair yard, and it wasn't long before DXC's 5212 and 5229 came back from Waltham with the coaches for train 803 to Greymouth.
While passengers were boarding the Transalpine, two freight trains came rumbling past. The first one was 736 to Picton, with DXBs 5120 and 5114 up front, while the second was train 882 from Racecourse Hill to Wilston. That train had DXC 5304 and DC 4801 on the point, and this was the first time I had ever seen DC 4801. Then I went out to Rolleston on the Orbiter and No. 5 bus routes, riding on Yutong Electric No. GB8919 and MAN Diesel No. GB5465 in the process. But after nearly two hours of waiting for a train, I gave up and went back to Annex Road. On the way back to the city, aboard Diesel Bus No. GB5477, not to be confused with the DX of the same number, the timing worked out very well, and I caught this light engine movement passing through Islington. DFB 7010 and DXC 5517 were bringing in train 930D from Dunedin, but by this time, they were running over two hours late after a non-fatal run-in with a car at Dunsandal. I was very confused as to why DFB 7010 is now down south, because she's actually a northerner.
Now I thought this was quite an odd catch. DXC 5258 and the recently overhauled 5022, which now looks weird as a DXC when she had previously been a DXB. On this occasion, DXC's 5258 and 5022 were moving over to another track in order to collect the empty wagons for train 849 to Nakawo on the west coast. At this point, there was still plenty of time to spare before DXC's 5229 and 5212 came back from Greymouth, so I went back to the city centre, actually intending to go for a tram ride this time. I decided to wait for the next tram, hoping that Invercargill number 15 would be less busy later on. I have very little interest in that ex-Sydney tram, especially in her current livery, so I waited for ex Dunedin number 11 instead. I decided to hop off number 11 at the intersection where Manchester Street meets High Street. This is where the trams currently have to stop and to change direction, because the loop through stop number 7 is still closed at the time of uploading.
Infocargo 15 was the next tram to show up after the W2, and she wasn't too busy this time. So I boarded this thing to continue round the rest of the loop and back to Cathedral Junction. Number 15 is one of the so-called Bernie safety cars, built by J.G. Brill & Company in 1921 for the most southerly tram lines in the world. Sadly, the Invercargill system closed in 1952, but we still have at least two trams left to remember the old system. Number 15 was restored by the Tramway Historical Society and re-entered service in 2013. She was built with only one set of doors on each side, which allows for one-man operation. That information comes from the New Zealand Rolling Stock Register website, as well as Trams Still Around New Zealand, a book written by Graham Stewart. Now the uh, wonderful old building we're looking at on the left is part of Christ College. This is a very well-known, very old and uh, quite expensive private school. It's a boys only secondary school which has been here since the mid 1850s. It's a very English style place, very expensive place to send a boy, and lovely buildings if you look through this gateway here. Hi, 
right over the river there, beautiful Hackley Park, a huge area of inner city parkland, one of the biggest in the southern hemisphere, and all those tents and things they're setting up over there uh, for a uh, music festival happening over the weekend. Stop number 14. Uh, this is the start of Armagh Street. So on the right hand side here we have mainly houses and apartments. Lots of those houses are actually owned by that school, Christ College. And a separate school we're passing on the left, Cathedral Grammar, and unlike Christ College, uh, Cathedral Grammar will take the odd girl as well. <laughs> that little timber building there, it's familiar to New Zealanders and Australians, or at least Australians who watch the Grand Designs TV program, that's because the house behind that old timber building featured on that TV program. Style Park is called Crapper Square, and just over the road to the front right is the Grange Bin and Breakfast. If you are at the Montreal Hotel, that's down the other end of the park. Right behind that fence is a big flooded hole that used to be the Price Waterhouse or PWC building. Well, that was a very large 21 story building. distance we can see the Margaret Mahi playground it's a fantastic place for taking young children that is the biggest and the most amazing <coughs> playground in New Zealand it's probably bigger than most playgrounds in Australia Right, lovely new Regent Street, popular for ice cream, coffee, wine, beer, waffles, fried chips, lots of other things, nice restaurants and bars. Stop 18. Easy <laughs> over there. <laughs> Right, so we just run all, uh, come out of uh, New Regent Street, crossing the road, back to stop one. That's the end of my day, and I think it's probably going to be Graham or Tom who would take over. Two people to take over and from me, it's going to be Tom and Sam. <laughs> oh, you can always say you do the work of two people. <laughs> right. Having completed the full loop, or at least the full section that's currently operational, I decided to leave Invercargill number 15 at Cathedral Junction. After the fact, I returned to the crossing at Whiteley Avenue to film DXC's 5229 and 5212 bringing in train 804.
My last catch of the day was W2 class number 411 once again, and this time I was back at the intersection of Manchester and High Streets. Thank you. 